Transportation Committee, Commissioner Rain, your report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that a committee was signed to come up with some suggestions on mule deer. Um, we've since had three meetings, probably have approximately four more meetings in the life of the uh, um, currently projected committee. Over the next uh, couple months, as well, or possibly slightly longer than that, maybe three months. Um, basically, the committee got together and we came up with a few, call it rough guidelines, of what we're going to try to do under the direction that we were given when we started. And basically, it's not going to try to, re to repeat or summarize the science available. I mean, Many people have done that. Mr. Wellesley's done that in publications. The number of publications that are summarizations or you know, showing all the science behind stuff, that's not the purview of the committee. It is more, speci more specifically, it would be to develop specific, specific suggestions that if they are implemented, these suggestions, they will have the best chance of increasing, helping our deer populations. Um, you know, of course, we have not uh, at this point come up with any specific suggestions. We've basically come up with categories and gone through the history and come up with different categories upon which we'd like to make suggestions. Um, many of these suggestions will undoubtedly agree and support what Endow currently does. Some of them will differ. Um, it's, it's basically work in progress, and the committee had come up with the idea that Prolonging this into a long, drawn-out process would be not be very effective, and that to push it, for, push it forward in a relatively expeditious manner would keep us more focused. And, you know, the world does not need another study that's drawn out into years of meetings. So that's basically it. I believe our next meeting is scheduled for June. We have not have anything scheduled at all in May. Anybody have any questions? Uh, if not, I'll go on to the next item on the agenda. Cab reports on mule deer overview efforts within each county. Got any county boards that want to report? Yeah. For the record, uh, Gil Yannick, Carson Advisory Board. Uh, we now have a uh, Tri-County Carson Range Mule Deer Restoration Working Group. Uh, Douglas County uh, decided to join with us in Douglas County. I mean, Washington, Washoe County decided to join with Carson and Douglas. And they had a, the last meeting was on April 29th. Uh, in attendance uh, was Bob Cook from Douglas, Rex Flowers from Washoe, Doug Martin from Carson, Eric Sheets from Douglas, and John Valley from Carson. Uh, the highlights uh, of what, what took place was that we, uh, they agreed that they would uh, go back to our, the cabs suggesting that we take a joint action with a strategy for habitat that included herd and habitat inventory and related analysis. They agreed to include submissions for heritage projects, projects with the Division of Forestry and other entities because funding is a major concern. Uh, the focus uh, geographically related to Endow Management Areas 19 and 29, but primarily the Carson Range from Douglas County in the south, Carson County in the middle, and Washoe County in the north. It was agreed to request uh, staff support from Endow. Uh, we we want to see, hopefully we can get some representatives to attend our next discussion. We felt that they could provide some specific recommendations and also discuss with them land and water issues that maybe we're all not aware of. Uh, the discussion about the plans focused on what our targets were and how we would determine what success looks like after implementation of the plans. So uh, we've got six people working, you know, together, and uh, we hope to come back to uh, our, our individual boards with recommendations by the next meeting, and then we'll bring those forward to the commission. Thank you. Any questions of Gil? Thank you, Gil. Any other uh, county advisory boards? <coughs> okay.
Andy Domendi, uh, Elko CAB. We've only had one meeting. We came up with most of the same ideas that everybody else has. We, uh, the chairman at our last meeting said he would kind of like to watch what the, the Mueller Restoration Committee is going to come up with and see if we can come up with some newer ideas. I mean, we're all coming up with the same ideas, and we really would like to watch and see. Now, from a personal standpoint, and I'll back up and say this is me just representing myself, we were informed that Utah has a, a position that I guess we have now, and I forget Partners. the name of it. Partners for Conservation and Development. And I personally think this is where we're going to have to go is to get a unity amongst all the agencies. They said they've restored over a million acres in Utah. Um, and by gathering everybody together and making one group out of it and working toward one direction that they are able to get that much done. And I think that's my personal feeling is that's the direction we have to go. Instead of doing piecemeal here and there, get this organized and go in one direction. That's me personally. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, for the record, Corey Lytle, Lincoln Cab. Uh, at our meeting, we threw out uh, a first skeleton draft plan coming from from Lincoln. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a collaboration between the endow biologist and uh, some of their personnel down there. The cab, the volunteer working group that we had, um, everything we have identified up to now. And then we took, we took a lot of the data that Mike had, Mike Scott, he's our biologist down there, and he kind of gave us a bunch of the technical stuff and then just kind of let us run with it. And we kind of came up with a draft plan. So it's kind of a skeleton uh, start, so to speak. It's like these guys are saying, it's a lot of the same stuff that we've been going over. Uh, what we really want to do is, is make that list, kind of let it coincide with what the Mule Deer Committee's doing. Um, hopefully come back with some, some you know, pinpoint directional uh, recommendations, hopefully by the fall, and I would like to have a final, you know, sometime in the winter time on this. And we realize it's not an official document, it can't be, you know, adopted anywhere or anything like that, but it gives us something to, something to set back to, uh, especially if we start doing projects and getting these, you know, collaborative efforts with the, especially the federal agencies. Um, one of the members on the committee that I have is a fire ecologist from the BLM there in Caliente. And so getting these guys involved one-on-one -on -one and directly is, a, man, it's, a, it's key. It's key to getting your projects pushed through. And so we're, you know, we're trying. I, I only have five copies in the interest of saving trees. If anybody wants them, I'll email them to you. They're all in Word format. If anybody wants to rob them, steal stuff, cut and paste, be, be more than welcome to do that. All of them. Anybody have any questions? Give me one to Scott, too. That'd be good. Thank you. It's easy as a start, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Some of it's politically correct, some of it's not so politically correct, but that's okay. You've obviously done a lot of work on it. We're, we're trying. We're, we're trying. A lot of involvement. I had 17 guys at the last meeting, and some of them were screaming. So some of what? They were screaming. It was good. It was good. So. You're doing good then, if they are. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Any other question for Corey? If not, any county reports? Um, I had two questions related to when Scott, when you talked about where you're going at the Mule Deer Committee, just. For, for knowledge, one of the questions is is that is you said people have looked at statistics stuff, but is your group actually looking at where, as mentioned in the in the mule deer harvest presentation we heard, where we had the highest removal of predators, be it mountain lions or coyotes, because of pelting things, what that impact is, and, and, and is anybody going to track? Or are you going to get those statistics to track in your group? We've what gone that over. Impact is we've gone over um, that history at length and. In well, at least parts of two different uh, meetings, and you know, we've dis we've discussed well, I mean, that I'm virtually just, because a lot of what your meetings do isn't share. I mean, I'm, we're not getting a lot of what comes out of that, so I'm kind of asking. You have to kind of look at the meet uh, minutes, of the meeting basically. Um, it's not always a lot going it's on. It's not always clear from the minutes because the minutes are abstracted; they're not verbatim. <laughs> 
No, nope. sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. One person talking. So, I mean, I was just asking from part of the, the second thing is, is I haven't picked up in, any, in reading your minutes is, have your committee talked anything about wild horses and what they're doing to range land and that sort of thing in, in detail? Because I haven't picked up that discussion. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, we have. That is one of the uh, points. Um, as said, we have not finalized any of the conclusions. However, that it is indeed one of the points for which we are working on um, come up with a suggestion. The feral horse issues, of course, it's one of the keys, but there's quite a few, you oh. know, major, major points. And at this point, you know, I mean, I can't really speak for the entire committee. Um, Mr. Lytle is a member of the committee. Um, our assemblyman who was sitting here in the front row, he uh, who left, he was a member of our committee. And uh, you know, we'll basically have to s see what our conclusions are. We've not yet drawn up formal conclusions for that. But wild horses is indeed one of those factors. Um, we have indeed gone over in great detail the issues with the rise and fall of mule deer and the history. We've spent pretty much meeting in half on history from several different um, entirely op opposite points of view, shall we say, of the predation issue. We've had that from totally opposite points of view. I'd suggest that, you know, maybe attend some of the meetings they have, or else at least if you have any concerns like horses or whatever, other concerns, you know, email them or correspond with the committee with your concerns so they can bring them up, you know. Are you going to pay for me to attend that meeting because it's an awful long drive? Do it pro bono like everyone else does. <laughs> well, I was going to say you could have taken the WAFA pro bono too, but I don't yeah. stop there. I don't think the committee members have charged anything. But, you know, I don't think any of the committee, so it's a uh, committee's really, uh, really dedicated to this project. And I, I do not think that any committee members charged the department for any of their time. Commissioner Cabrillo? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the horse problem is one that's vexing from the standpoint of we really can't do anything about it. We, we can't conduct. Uh, Roundups. Um, we can study the results of uh, pulling horses off of areas uh, that uh, where they were competing with uh, wildlife and the like. But our we're, our hands are kind of tied uh, in what we do with respect to the issue of uh, feral horses. Uh, you know, I'd love to be able to have some official position other than to support the roundups by the federal government. That's really in their hands, unfortunately. It's basically it. I'll let her go. <laughs> Anybody else uh, in the cabs? If not, I'll uh, move on to the next item.